Where most of our homes now stand, there was once only wilderness. But deep beneath the canopy, there was always movement, one common sight, food on the move. The natural habitat of pigs is woods, and so when people started to domesticate pigs, it was the most natural thing really to take them back into the woods to fatten them on, on the acorns and things that have been eating as uh, wild animals. The forest was the weald of Kent and Sussex. The hundreds of paths going in and out were the drove roads. Throughout Roman Britain, they were being used, and far into the Iron Age before, and probably into the Bronze Age. In fact, it's just conceivable that when people began to farm in the Neolithic period, about 3000 BC, they used drove roads to take their animals into the uh, Weald and Forest. The Weald was once the most densely wooded area of England, taking in the downs of Kent and Sussex. People lived and raised their livestock on the edges, in Thanet, home of the Kings of Kent, and in places which later became known as Manors, Wye and Milton in Kent, Ditchling and East Blatchington in Sussex. It's from these places that the roads run, paths worn into the ground over centuries by trotters, hooves and feet. People from a particular village on the Downs or the coastal plain would take their pigs to the same place in the woods every single year. So they would be, they'd be sort of going backwards and forwards along roughly the same route, obviously every time, and making a beeline for the woods. But that's why we've got the, this sort of radiating network that we've got. Without drove roads, people would have died of starvation. Droving was a way of life that was absolutely fundamental. In early times, before the markets led to the widespread trade in pigs, each drover would travel up from a particular manner to their own designated piece of wilderness, known as a den. The practice has given us many of the place names which survive to this day. The journey would begin in June when there was no longer enough grazing in the villages. The pigs were walked 15, sometimes 20 miles. Then they spent several months gorging on acorns and beech nuts and leaf fodder until November and the return. You've got to imagine vast numbers of swine and their herders. The din must have been incredible over the wilderness forest, you know, making homewards. <laughs> And they must have been jolly pleased with themselves to coming back home after four months, looking after these animals out there in the weald. Back home, the pigs were slaughtered, salted and stored. They were the main, sometimes the only, food supply for whole communities during winter. What we do know from, from doomsday records is that people were paying a tithe, that's one pig in ten, tithe actually means tenth to the manor and we know then, we, we can extrapolate from that, that it was about 150,000 pigs being brought in and out again um, in 1086. Gradually the forests were cleared with wood needed to fuel the many furnaces that were producing iron, timber required for shipbuilding. Markets and farms sprang up and the dens soon became towns. Even the pigs contributed by eating so many of the acorns which would have gone to make new trees. By 1600, droving was a thing of the past. Today, only about 20% of the original forest remains. It's called the High Weald, a precious snapshot of what our once untamed countryside was like. And the drove roads are still there. We've no definitive map of droves in Kent or Surrey or Sussex. We badly need them. We need people to go out and examine the ground and identify them. Uh, we want people to examine maps and link them up, you know, that kind of stuff. But in many ways, they're fundamental to understanding the history of the Southeast. A history which began thousands of years ago with the forest and its fruits. Derek Johnson for Meridian Tonight.